Hello there, and welcome back to another Hoyverse reaction video. This time I'm actually reacting because I haven't actually seen the trailer. Unfortunately, the live stream was during my work hours, so I couldn't watch it then, nor could I record a video then. But here I am, and I'm really, really excited because Fontaine seems to be cooler and cooler by the minute. And I really, really want to see more of Arlecchino, if I'm being totally honest. And maybe actually get some hints on what uh, Farina does. But, um, yeah. Let's get into the video. Uh, it is five, it says it's like six minutes long, but most likely around the end there's going to be the whole, like, two minutes or so of event showcases, so... Let's just, let's just go. I'll let it go through once on its own, like the full trailer, and then I'll take it bit by bit and just talk about it, see what, what's, what, what happens. I'm not sure exactly when it began. But a prophecy has been circulating around Fontaine. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. I, Thosalor, hereby welcome you to the nation of Hydro, and acknowledge the value and significance of your trip. Now, you may rejoice in this. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? To the people of Fontaine, the line between a trial and a performance can be a little blurred. Welcome, one and all, to the Opera Epicles. Watch carefully now. Blink and you might miss it. And over here is my sister Lynette, who will be working as my wonderful assistant. Ta da! Step on up! Let the magic begin! Here comes the finale! to spend some time at the bottom of the sea in peace. before the rest of the world becomes part of this underwater museum, too. I'm... Wait... Who am I? The water is gradually swallowing our memories. It won't be long before it swallows us. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has a consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? Rain. It's raining. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. This part of the show? You gotta be kidding! Uh, what happened? Charges have now been pressed, and as such, a trial is in order. Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know and seek the protection of the guards. Dear God, it's a whole army of Gardamax. I believe this is indeed the finale! <laughs> 
your so-called justice, your beloved drama by turning a blind eye to the suffering of the people. In your eyes, the value of a human life is nothing compared to those cold laws you hold so dear. So this is how justice is done in Fontaine. What a joke. You've got your rules. Well, I've got mine too! Now wait a second! I know, I, I... Ah, oh, okay. Child is indeed Mr. Worldwide. He appeared in pretty much every gosh darn nation possible. If not on his own, at least during a batter. <laughs> ah, this is amazing. Okay, yeah. Though it's a pretty long trailer now that I, I'm, I'm, uh, now that I look at it. 4 minutes and 45 seconds if you count the rest of this, but afterwards it's the events. I'll take a look at them after, but oh boy, this is long. <laughs> so there's this prophecy that said that talks about Fontaine, most likely the Fontaine's destruction with the Archon being the only one left. Again, but a prophecy has been circulating around Fontaine. I don't, uh, uh, I, I'm still not used to the voices, but I think this is uh, Lenny. And it seems like from the trailer that Lini and Linnea, at least, are trying to uncover some secrets about Fontaine. But I remember one line he said, like, some sort of me mechanism that is doing the, um, the trials. Not the trials, but the sentences. Like, how can this mechanism send, like, uh, give accurate sen uh, sentences for crimes? At some point in here, I think during this part, and it's interesting because it's possible that Farina slash Falsalor is not the judge, jury, and executioner, and they're following an entirely different thing as, uh, to give out the punishments. Oh, the the areas look amazing. Interesting architecture. This this sort of gives me vibes, sort sort of like a. Uh, an old wizard house, you know, with a lot of lots of nature around it, like quite high, quite high of a building, with sort of a tower to it. I wonder if it has, I wonder if it has anything to do with Nicole. Was it Nicole, the one that contacts you at around the end of the um, uh, the Sumeru Archon quest and tells you about rewriting fate? It's entirely possible. Since, well, after Fontaine, we're pretty much in the endgame of Genshin's story. Because, you know, we've had Sumeru be pretty much the middle midpoint, and now Fontaine goes into the second half of the story. So I wouldn't be too surprised that we get more and more serious and more and more revelations. A nice little area. I really like how this town looks. This looks like a an area that might be either underwater... In an underwater, in a cave that has an underwater entrance, or it's in between Sumeru and Fontaine. This gives me lots of uh, Sumeru vibes. What else? Uh, we got, I think we get more of the sewers, or at least the underground, and honestly it's going to be awesome that we're getting an underground map to go with all of these. Uh, we also have the characters with Lenny. Who eh, does the look look wise? I actually like Lenny's uh, design. I just don't really vibe with his kit per se. Then we have Lynette. Again, really like the design of the uh, of the siblings, and I actually really like her um, her skills and the way that the VFX is done for the skills, like these blue. Dark effects. I think they're more cyan because she's Animo. Oh, and each of them have the this little companion in a hat, which is actually really cute. And if I recall correctly, don't don't quote me on this, but I think Fermine is also part is, is a part of the siblings. And he also has the penguin. So that's that's really nice. There was something else. 
not during the beginning. During the beginning, we do get a uh, more uh, better look at, at, in general, at Fontaine. Ooh, also a little birdie. And the bird does look interesting. Again, it's most likely a critter that's mainly going to be in the air, maybe. Not entirely sure. Um, oh, is that a uh, mech? No? Wait, let me... Let me go through the video itself. But yeah, we do get a better look at... Uh, I think this is the main city of from, from Fontaine. Hmm. Mm, maybe... The, that looks like the, 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 the fountain. The fountain, the jets, water jet thingies. I think we do see that place a bit later. Yeah, here. Mm, no, it's not the same place. Uh, we do have... Oh yeah, we do see a mech. Well, it's not a mech, it's a robot. I don't remember what they called it. And we do see that Geo Lady back there. And yeah, I guess she's running some sort of underground organization. These guys look really cool. I really like that cost, those costumes. Look really nice. So I wonder if we're gonna have it robot NPCs, or if the, this is the model just for a new enemy, just reused throughout the city. And then we do have another scene in a bit here. Oh, that was uh, Charlotte. Oh, here's Charlotte again. There she is going past in a blur. Oh god, going frame by frame. That looks like a generic NPC. That? Oh, that's the... Wait. Isn't that an Electro Vision? No way. That would be hilarious and really unfortunate. Maybe I'm just not seeing uh, seeing things properly. Maybe it's uh, something else that's purple. Any other? That looks like a police woman. That's a big shadowy figure. I I know there were a couple other characters that appeared through here. I've seen them. Oh. I think this is that pol uh, that um, police woman with the with the electro sword that's around the ending. There's too much like blue on uh, on her, well on the silhouette of the character. Oh, is that Lynette? Could. Be, but hair's look hair looks too doesn't look right. Could be another character. That's another police woman, policeman. More things that look like a random MC, and we have Lenny with his pyrovision, putting up for his show. And I believe this is the last one in here. Couple other things, a couple other people that look like NPCs. And we go into the show proper. Well, into another shot of the most likely, like, what's the where the trials take place, maybe. Or it's the main, just the main building in Fontaine. We have Lenny's showcase, Lynette's showcase. The theater, those areas that I already talked about, Fermine's showcase, and then we go in the underwater, which looks beautiful. I'm in love with the way the underwater areas look. And I think... So, I would have loved for Hoyaverse to maybe give us a lot more underwater and give us the possibility to go under the water in every body of water that is in Teyvat. That is a highly unachievable, well, it's not unachievable, it's a very big task for Hoyaverse to do that. Because there's a lot of bodies, yeah, there's a lot of bodies of water that could remain without anything and they're way too shallow. 
but there's a lot of areas, especially near the shores of Liyue and Mondstadt, and now even uh, up in the northeast of uh, Sumeru, where there will be a lot of work and a lot of little plans and details that they would have to put around. And I feel like this is the best sort of compromise we could get. We get diving only in, if this is how it works, we get on diving only in Fontaine, kind of like how you had Sarouche as a as an gameplay mechanic only in that in in her area. So we get diving only in Fontaine, but the underwater areas are gorgeous. I've already said this once, but this does remind me of Subnautica. But the more I see it, the more I'm like, this looks better than that. Those little sea lion guys again. That looks like a Sumeru ruin. Or maybe it's Conrian. Not entirely sure. Oh, speaking of Conria, there's still that huge door in Sumeru that we haven't gotten a real answer to, or well opened. So it's entirely possible that might have been that might be the area where we go to Conria proper once we get to that point in the story. Whatever, we're not here for speculation, we're here to see the trailer. More fishies. I do like how they're like actual 3D models and not just 2D assets that they put together. And here we get more of that prophecy thing. Like, I, I, I wonder how this ties in with, uh, with false lore. Like, how the how is false lore really behind the scenes? Because we have heard her talk and we have seen her demeanor being very dismissive, and wanting to enjoy a really good court session. But again, this beginning bit here portrays her in a sort of, it's either in a very dismissive state, or very, but then again, because this could be a red herring, this could just be the rain. So this could be, she could be very sad because of her people, and the way that the uh, story will go. It's entirely possible that false lore, that everyone in Fontaine will be against false lore. Actually, that's entirely probable how the story will go. Because we already have a couple of groups that are investigating the truth between um, the truth about the the court sessions and how the punishments are being given and everything and the sentences. So in reality, it's entirely possible that what the story will go is is going to be about having the people rebel against false lore and then false lore's reaction to it all. But since the Traveler is there, and the Traveler is not counted in the Prophecy, because the Traveler is not affected by the Ermin Soul, oh my god, it's entirely possible the Prophecy will not be fulfilled. I could see it be in a way that normally, so without the Traveler, okay, I'm going into speculation, screw it, let's go into speculation. Without the Traveler, False Lore would be, uh, would have her people rebel against her, and she would be the one to drown Fontaine because of a tantrum, for example. Because I could easily see False Lord throw a tantrum. And then once she realizes what she has done, this is the scene we would have gotten where she's sad. But because the Traveler is not counted by prophecies, because Erminsil does not track them, does not track the Traveler, it could throw literally everything about the prophecy upside down. <laughs> oh my god. I make I, I, I'm gonna make I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's a prediction. Okay, what do we have afterwards? Then we have the boss. This is the new boss, which looks amazing. I wonder what the lore reason for these guys being here is. Like, what's the lore reason? I wonder if they actually play into the story, because not all bosses play into the story. So that's the thing. Then we have uh, Linnea Linnae's, uh Linnea Lynette's uh, magic trick, or supposed magic trick, and a bit about the mechanism that's giving out the sentences and stuff. We have that new character again. And then we have the ending of their magic trick, which, from the looks of it, Kills Lynette. And I'm. It's a hundred percent a setup. 
the traveler is once again be well no no it's not he's not being well it's highly it's highly similar to the situation in Liyue. In Liyue, the, uh, the, the the Archon's body falls down, right? And then the Traveler is sort of getting not framed for it, but he's the one who's, you know, the Traveler. He's the outsider in uh, Liyue at that point with no alibi. He barely arrived. Who knows what he has done before arriving to Liyue? And that's when he runs. Uh, the Traveler runs away. And meets with child. And once again, we have a faked death. Which brings the suspicion onto the traveler. And child appears at some point. <laughs> I'm curious how it's going to be different from uh, the Liyue Archon quest. So of course it's going to be different. Because we won't have a funeral. This is most likely going to dive a lot more into um, sort of an actual... An actual case in in the in, uh, in the court of uh, of Fontaine, ah, but then again later we have this scene where we have uh, her and and uh, and these guys and her guards against the pretty much police, I'd say. Didn't we have? Oh, there we go. And this is the. The, the Electro Girl I was talking about that maybe appeared as that blue blue blur. But yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see where it all leads. Wait, but I now realize she's destroying the robots. So this isn't necessarily the police trying to arrest the traveler. This might be a huge misun this might be a huge misunderstanding. Cause if I go like this. As such, a trial is in order. Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know and seek the protection of the guards. Dear God, it's a whole army of Gardamax. Gardamax. Because uh, you have that guy talking about the trial and everything, and then you go straight into this scene. Leave. This is indeed the finale. <laughs> then you have Farina talk. We go back to the, to the boss. Oh, she's Claymore. And then you have both of them fighting the, the Gardamax. Like, 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 both of them do, do, like, do destroy the mechs. Unless this is supposed to be a different scene. No, it's not, because we have this before. Anyway, then, child, without any, like, thought, jumps... I said child, without any thought, jumps into the middle of the court. So this is how justice is done in Fontaine. What a joke. You've got your rules. Well, I've got mine too! But I wonder why why is he doing this? This gives me vibes of child going rogue, in my opinion. I know that the Harbingers have a lot of freedom, generally speaking, and that now, after the oh, after everything, most likely the Sarita does not have as much political liberty to send her Fatui anywhere anymore, because you have Mondstadt being attacked by Fatui, but barely and barely tolerating them. You have Liyue, who knowing was attacked by the Fatui. You have uh, Inazuma, who was infiltrated by the Fatui, and you have Sumeru again infiltrated by the Fatui. So. Either child is going rogue here for some reason, or they don't care anymore about their political um, stance for, uh, with with the other nations. Because they already have four noses. If they get the fifth noses, uh, nosi, they already have six of them. There's only the Natlan uh, Natlan noses left afterwards, and having six noses. At your disposal, depending on if someone could use them. Like, we don't even know if a normal person with a vision could use them, or if they can be given to people as no sees, as, as instead of visions, or if the Teresa could use them. We don't know that. The only instance of someone using a Gnosis other than an Archon was with uh, Scaramouche, but. Uh, Scaramouche slash the Wanderer was built specifically for that and then altered by Dottori. So, 
he was more special, if you want to call him that. But yeah, no, I'm curious to see where Child's plotline is gonna go, especially that he doesn't actually appear in this. Like, you have Lene Lynette for Monet. Uh, you have, I don't remember her name. I think this is, I don't really want to butcher his name. Which uh, And then we have Farina slash Falsalor. And she does have this demeanor of like looking down upon mortals, while uh, while uh, while a Aether here is like, I'm gonna punch you. Well, no, I'm gonna slap you. He's gonna slap her. And Paimon's like, Yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> uh, this is like a sibling fight, and there's the father in the background. Anyway, I'm really excited to see where the story goes with this. Really curious. Let's see the events now, real quick. Mega Mega Me Mega Mecha Me Melee. Ah, uh, I thought it would be an actual like mecha fight, but it's kind of like a mini game, a rhythm game from the looks of it. Clockwork Worship is preparing for a major commission, but some complications seems to have risen. Then we have what? Hmm. Oh, okay, so there's multiple mini-games. Is this the, like, flagship event of the, of the series? Ooh, there's the, the robots. The robot enemies. So they're once again infused with, uh, with elements. Wait, stop it. Verdict of Blades in Hidden Mirage and Fontaine. Opponents... Whose origins are shrouded in mystery are roaring for fight. Defeat legions of formidable enemies advance towards the crown of Teyvat's strongest. Actually, I can just check. Yes, this is the... I'm surprising that the main event of a new version, especially, is really just a collection of minigames instead of it being something... Oh. Ah, uh, but I do already have C6 Bennett. That's sad. Then we have Relic Records, creation of the Hydro Nation. Ooh, the adventure continues as you and Paimon finally arrive in Fontaine. Various splendid landscapes wait you in this nation. Yes, indeed. I cannot wait to explore Fontaine. Like, I'm really excited. Oh, is this like that event uh, w during the start of Sumeru where you had to do a lot of stuff tied to the different specific Sumeru things, like defeating Sumeru enemies and, and fungi and collecting Sumeru things, because this could be really cool, as that event, generally speaking, allowed you to get a lot of early, a lot of materials pretty early on and also get some rewards from that. So if this is similar to that, it'll be really nice. Studies in Light and Shadow. We're going underwater! Oh! Armored crab. There's one more thing I forgot to talk about. Speaking of crabs, we get Leyline Overflow. Oh yeah, the new new artifact sets. New weapons. Oh, this looks really cool. Looks like both a bow and a wand. <laughs> okay, this looks really nice as well. I really hope they're going to make more more weapons like this, which are more unique. I bel are these the craftable ones? I know there's a set of weapons going into the battle pass, and there's also a new set of craftable weapons. I think these are the craftable ones. Because the different looking ones most likely are part of the battle pass, since the battle pass, or like the original five weapons also aren't really in a set per se. While the Sumeru free craftable weapons were in a set. Genshin Impact. Nice. Uh, there was one other thing, and that was the crab fire boss, fire crab boss. Which I'm not sure where's the showcase of it. Either way, there's a giant crab boss that appears, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's about it for the trailer. I am really excited for Fontaine. 
and I've been pretty excited for it for quite some time already. I think like most people, once 3.6 hit, there hasn't really been much to do in, in, uh, in Sumeru. There are some new areas and stuff, but those can be done at some point. But a new region altogether always hypes me. And with Sumeru's release being so good, I have a feeling that Fontaine hopefully will either go the same quality or will elevate from, uh, from Sumeru even better. Because your story, in my opinion, needs to get better and better as it progresses, because at some point people will stop playing after four years and the story barely really going anywhere, when you think about it, other than the Teresa gathering the Gnosis. But yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.